Hey guys, welcome to this live session by Great Learning. My name is Anirudh Rao. I'll be your mentor for this session on the step-by-step -step guide that you guys can use to become data scientists. But then guys, before we begin with this session, can you all head to the comment section quickly and put down a quick yes in the comment section in the chat box if you can hear me fine and of course if you can see the screen fine, if you can see me fine. Uh, guys, just head to the comment section, uh, the chat box and just put a quick yes if the stream is fine for you all and then we can begin the session. All right, super, Prithvik, uh, Dorian, Singhania, everyone says yes, guys. Good afternoon from wherever you guys are tuning from across the world. I hope all of you are keeping safe. This is going to be a very nice session. As always, the session is going to be highly energetic. It's going to be highly interactive. So, uh, you know, we appreciate uh, if you put down all the questions, all the things that you just want to say out, you know, just put it down in the chat box. We'll be more than happy to pick your questions up and of course help you to, uh, you know, help you go on your way to become data scientists. Right guys, now before we actually begin with the session, let me take a quick second of your time because I want to guide you all on this venture that we have here at Great Learning called Great Learning Academy. Now, Great Learning Academy is a place you guys definitely should check out because here we are providing free courses in multiple domains. We have hundreds of domains, hundreds of courses. And at the end of the day, everything that you get to learn on Great Learning Academy is completely free, right? Now you can get started for free. You can learn for free and you can even earn a certain certificate of completion absolutely free of cost as well. So right from the start of your learning till the end, you do not have to pay as a penny. That is the advantage we provide here at Great Learning. So make sure you check out Great Learning Academy. Now, uh, since we're talking about data science, right now, data science is a very popular domain that you guys will already know about. Let me just pick up, uh, you know, one simple program here to show you guys. Now, this is a beginner program. Uh, it's called Data Science Foundational. So basically here with this course, you will be given training about all the foundational concepts that are in the world that govern the world of data science. It's extremely vital uh, that you know all of these, right? See, as you can see, you just have to create an account. You can enroll for free. You can learn for free and, you know, have a course completion certificate as well. Now, that's a very important thing. This certification will show that you have put in, uh, you know, this uh, completion certificate is going to show that you have add, uh, you have uh, put in a good amount of time and effort to learn something new. And when you put it up on your resume, right, it's going to showcase to the hiring manager that you have some authority on this particular domain. It's going to help your profile stand out when compared to the others, right? Guys, we have multiple different courses. I just picked up one. So no matter where you are in your career, you're in school, you're in college, you're about to graduate, you just graduated, you're switching your career, you're switching your jobs, you're an experienced professional, guys, everything, right? So all of these things, no matter where you are in your career, I promise this that, uh, you know, we have something here at Great Learning Academy that you can definitely make use of. Now, if you're looking for a job, we have the job interview preparation section that's going to help you immensely uh, to get you across from where you are to where you have to be as well, right? We have multiple learning collaborators, some of the best universities in the entire world. You have Stanford Business School, IIT Madras, Great Lakes, uh, Texas Mecom, SRM University, Northwestern School, of professional studies, right? You can just go uh, go and get the complete details of what we do here at greatlearning.in uh, slash academy as well. Now, these courses are thought by subject matter experts who are completely proficient uh, in the domain that we're looking at. Uh, if you keep scrolling down, you can take a look at the live sessions. For example, you are tuned into this particular live session. Again, my name is Anirad Rao. It's an absolute pleasure uh, to be teaching you all on this session. You can check out uh, all the live sessions we have scheduled you can stay in touch you can make a note out of it and if you guys subscribe to the great learning youtube channel you will get a notification every time we put out these videos right now uh, you have multiple ways that you can reach Great Learning Academy. First of all, go to Google, just quickly type in Great Learning Academy. You will be given with our website link. You can go to the URL as well. And the other thing is that we have an application, the Great Learning app. 
that you guys can use uh, to definitely get access to all the learning content here. Now it's available both on the Apple App Store and of course on the Google Play Store as well. So make sure that you check it out, make sure you install the app and get to learning because uh, at the end of the day, knowledge is power, ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute uh, requirement to today's world, especially now, right? Online education is taking the world by storm. Right guys, now coming back to the presentation again, as I just mentioned, make sure you subscribe to the Great Learning YouTube channel, hit that bell icon. Now what happens when you hit the bell icon is that every time we put out a video, right? As soon as our video goes live, you will get a notification. YouTube will remind you saying, hey, Great Learning put out this video. Now that's gonna help you immensely because these guide videos, the 2021 series, there's multiple videos we put out, uh, uh, you know, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, or a monthly basis, whatever it is, right? These videos, you definitely can and make use of as soon as we put it out, right? Uh, you know, there are certain time sensitive things uh, that you definitely should look forward to. For example, what are the top 10 programming languages in 2021? These keywords are very vital that as soon as we put out a video, you watch it. Right, guys. Now, uh, if you have any questions, as I just mentioned, make sure you head to the comment section and let us know because we'll be more than happy to uh, answer all of your comments there. Okay, perfect. So, uh, Singanya says, okay, let's go. <laughs> yes, sure thing. Let's get started with the session, guys. Uh, here are some of the uh, takeaways from this particular session. We're going to start out by taking a look at what data, uh, what data science is and who a data scientist in fact is. Once you understand what the concept is, who this person, uh, you know, who is the person who works in this domain. Next, I'm going to give you a quick step-by-step -step guide. It's going to be comprehensive in each of these steps. There'll be 11 or 12 steps that you guys can definitely make you use of on your way to learning to becoming a data scientist right now after that I am sure you guys will have questions saying okay so what happens to data science after the pandemic ends now we are living uh, in the COVID-19 pandemic era things are very different 2020 was a very very different year 2021 seems to be pretty much the same so when you're looking towards it I'm going to be guiding you on what happens now this is a very very important discussion that we are going to have so make sure you stick till uh, stick around till the end because you will will understand the trends, the requirement and what is going on in the world of data science after the pandemic ends, right? And of course, in the end, I'm going to be guiding you guys on how you definitely should look towards becoming experts in the field of data science, right guys? Now, to start out with what data science actually is, now let me quickly ask you a question. How is the weather tomorrow? Right now, the second you ask this question, you might think so. Okay, so how would I know? Right? Uh, if you want to look at the weather, what would you do? A simple Google search, you're going to ask Siri, you're going to ask Alexa, all of these things. Now, back in the days when there was no Siri, Alexa or computers, in fact, the way they would predict the weather is they would go to the terrace, they would go outside, they would look at the sky. If the sky is pretty dark, if it's black, it means there's a good chance it's going to rain or there's going to be a hailstorm, there's going to be a snowstorm or whatever it is, right? Uh, so from that till now, we have come to a point where we can predict the weather of what the weather is going to be like in the evening. Uh, in fact, today night, tomorrow night, day after tomorrow night, one year from now, we can predict what the weather is going to be like at any point on the globe right now. Earth is a pretty big planet. Now, when you think about it, uh, to pinpoint and say this is going to be the weather at this point of time is something which is brilliant right now. How is this possible? This is possible because of the fact that data science exists. There is so much data collected from so many sensors that it gives us a chance to predict what happens in the future using the current data as well. And now more than ever, ladies and gentlemen, predictions have been uh, as accurate as accuracy, you know, the term accuracy is right. It's, it's pretty accurate. And now one thing is when you, when you want to maybe go out, uh, you know, head out and socialize, you want to see the weather because to see if you have to carry an umbrella, if you have to take your car out, all of that is fine. Here is where it's having a very big impact, which I personally look forward to is in emergency services. Now, if you're, if you're someone who's living in the coastal side of places and, uh, you know, you know that every time the, when someone says tsunami, it's, it's, it's a pretty wild thing, right? There is nothing like the force of nature. So, uh, whenever there is a tsunami before the tsunami hits the shore, there is usually an underwater earthquake that takes place. Now, uh, before there used to be manual earthquakes, they used to get detected by meters. Then the meteorological departments used to sound the alarm and people used to run. 
Now that's not the case. As soon as an earthquake is detected, there are alarms sounding everywhere across the coast where people start evacuating. It only takes minutes for Mother Nature to destroy the coast, right? It's a matter of life and death that data science is dealing through. And there are many other applications that we, we can talk about as well, right? Especially in the field of medicine and healthcare. Right now, data science is having the biggest impact, guys. Now, with this, you'll have a question saying, okay, so what is data science that, you know, it's this sparkly, this beautiful, uh, this amazing to take a look at. Now, data science is one of these studies where we will be having uh, data at hand. We'll have an entity called raw data. Now, we're going to take this raw data, convert it into something useful for us. Now, to give you a quick analogy, think about your favorite food. Guys, head to the comment section. Tell me what your favorite food is quickly, right? Now, not all the time your food is ready to eat, right? Uh, sometimes it has to be cooked. Sometimes it has to be fried. It has to be baked. There's a process which has to be done to take it from its raw form into something useful that you can eat, which is yum, which you absolutely love, right? Data science is this process, but instead of food, we're doing it to data. Data is raw. Data is something that you cannot use as it is. It has to be converted in most of the cases into something that's useful, right? Now, uh, I'm not sure if you guys know this or not. Your computer only understands zeros and ones. Your phone understands only zeros and ones, even though it seems to be getting more and more intelligent every day at its core level level at its most deep functioning level all it knows is zero and one that is it right now when we have that kind of a statement out and we're saying okay so we are having the most powerful computers around well what are we using this for right now data science is one of these beautiful applications of bringing together a good amount of data and a good amount of computing power as well let me give you an example the weather prediction one was an amazing example here's another one Think about the holiday season, right? The holiday season was what, a month ago, uh, you know, uh, when, the, when it's time for Christmas, when it's time for New Year, a lot of people buy a lot of things such as toys, desserts, ice creams, cakes, uh, you know, all these amazing things, sweaters, I absolutely love Christmas sweaters, uh, right? So there's many things that people keep buying during those times. Now, if you were a person who was selling all of these, how would you know how much to stock? How would you know what is the amount of sales that might happen for you, right? Now, you can predict all of this with the data that you have from last year or the uh, years before, right? Now, last year, you maybe had 100 customers walk in. There's a good chance you might have 120 people walk in. So you will buy 120 sweaters to sell. It is something simple. Now, I gave it to you in the scale of hundreds. This usually sells in the scale of millions across the world. Now, there is multiple, multiple companies who completely make use of data science for all of their day-to-day -day activities. Data science is like an ocean, right? Now, when I told you about the tsunami, this reminded me of another analogy. The domain itself is so absolutely huge that you guys as learners might definitely get confused about what to learn, how to learn, where to go about right so you will be left in a land where you might not know the language you might not know something you'll be very confused now keeping that in mind this is why we have uh, this step-by-step -step guide right now when you're taking a look at why we require data science in terms of numbers now i am a numbers guy whenever someone tells me something i expect them to back it up with numbers rather than guesses right here are some fabulous numbers on your screen which you might have not known about the world's population is somewhere around or less than 7.6 billion people but the number of emails we send every single day is 310 billion emails right now not all 7.5 billion people use computers and email but look at the sheer amount of mails that we send now, if that amuses you, here is another fact. Think about the storage you have in your laptop or your computers right now, right? It's 500 GB hard drive. It can be one terabyte. It can be two terabytes, all of this. Did you know that the amount of data that we generate every single day is somewhere around 22 lakh terabytes, 22 lakh. This is not a yearly number of 10 years. This is every single day. Every time the sun goes up and the sun goes down, we generate this amount of data, right? That's, uh, that is something which is astonishing. But, but, but to a data scientist, this is a very nice fact because in many cases, when we use very nice concepts such as machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence, all of these, 
more the data we have, the better we can teach our computers to use it and to help it understand what the data itself means, right? The disadvantage is we are generating a lot of data. The advantage to a data scientist is we can use all of these data to drive better solutions, right? So that is how this works. Again, guys, if you have any questions, uh, you know, make sure you head to the comment section and do let me know. I am monitoring all the comments on my mobile phone, so I'll be more than happy uh, to tell uh, you guys about it, right? Ha, again, coming back to the food example, apple, noodles, rice, fried rice, two minute Maggi. Now you guys have put out your favorite foods. Now there's a good chance you cannot eat all of them raw, right? For example, apple, yes, you can eat apple raw. Noodles, I highly doubt, but there are some people who eat noodles raw as well. Fried rice, of course, you cannot eat rice. You have to cook rice to eat, right? So that's the thing. That's where data gets converted uh, into information. Beautiful. Now, Moving on, uh, one important question that you will have is, okay, so who is a data scientist? Now, a data scientist is a person who is uh, like, let's say a four in one person. Now, what do these four things consist of? First of all, a data scientist must be a mathematician. Mathematics, the concept of statistics is extremely important in the field of data science. Now, it's a very common question we get saying, uh, you know, do we require mathematics for data science? If you ask me, the answer is an absolute yes. Uh, without mathematics, you can learn data science, but without understanding how things work, later when you are learning the advanced concepts, things will come crumbling down because you do not know the foundations. If your foundations are very strong, you can build a fabulous career in data science, guys. So first of all, a data scientist is a person who is very, very good at mathematics. If you are not good at mathematics, if you weren't good at mathematics, maybe in your school or college, do not worry. The maths we use here is extremely interesting. Uh, you know, you it will give you a feeling that you really want to learn it. That is how interesting things are here. Now, the second thing a data scientist is, is a trend spotter. Now, when I say trend spotter, what I actually mean is that this person uh, needs to have the capability to understand what might happen in the future, right? Now, let me take you back a couple of years. Did you really think that uh, people would play around with spinny little toys? Remember that I'm talking about the fidget spinner. The entire world went gaga and everyone around the world, like literally everyone around me wanted a fidget spinner, right? The young kids, the older people, even the older people, even senior citizens were like, okay, I'm seeing the spinny thing on the internet. What is it? I want one. Now that's a trend. Guess what? A lot of people actually spotted that it's going to become a sensation, but they were like, okay, no, you know what? This is not going to happen, but they were wrong. They had data to prove it saying this might hit or this might go viral. Now data scientist is one such person who understands trends like this. The third thing is he or she must be a programmer guys. You definitely need to work on programming. Now you might say, okay, so we're looking at data. We're looking at science. Why do we require programming? Beautiful question. Uh, now, data science is a concept where you are teaching your machine in many cases to work and make your job easier for you. So for you to convey things to your machine, you are going to require programming, right? Now, programming can be in multiple uh, facets, I would say. Python is a very, very popular programming language when it comes to data science. You have for data analytics, you have the R programming languages, uh, you have SAS, you have multiple different offerings, but, but, but. There is a reason Python is the number one programming language in today's world. And for data science, it's a beautiful language to work with. I've used Python for multiple years now, and it's absolutely a breeze. I absolutely love Python guys. So if you've ever used Python, head to the, uh, uh, you know, head to the comment section and do let me know. And, uh, you know, the fourth important thing we have to discuss is that a data scientist is a business manager. Now, if you're wondering why a data science guy needs to be uh, knowing of a business uh, aspect of things, let me tell you this. The first three, right, mathematician, trend spotter, and programmer, these three guys will solve the problem. Whatever the problem is at hand, these three guys are more than enough to solve the problem. But to solve the problem in a given time frame, to make sure that, uh, you know, they stick to the timeline of the company or the business that they're working for or the client, it becomes very, very important that they understand the business side of things, the business requirements, when to deliver the project, uh, you know, how they're supposed to deliver the project and a lot more, right? So it's, it's very, very important that, uh, you know, you definitely look towards this kind of a thought process as well. Now, now I've, I know I've had a lot of people saying, okay, so why is a business manager? As required so I hope I answered that question with this particular guide now 
coming to the most important guys i'm uh, uh, i am actually checking out all of your questions perfect now guys coming to the most important aspect of this discussion the step by step guide on how you guys can work towards becoming an expert in data science right let's dive right into it the first step is to ask yourself certain questions the first step is to make sure that uh, you know you are clear with where you have to be now the first question you can ask yourself is do you have an educational background in computer science your answer might be yes your answer might be no regardless of what your answer is you can become a data scientist second thing do programming languages excite you again this is a question where if if a programming language excites you it's amazing because as i've told you programming is really really fun if you know how to learn it and use it right the third thing are you a proactive learner who can learn new tools quickly now we are living in the world of data right as i mentioned data science is one of these domains where new tools new techniques new methodologies keep popping up every other day so you have to be this person who is teachable who is learnable in a fact where you can learn new things quickly adopt it and start using it guys so this is a question where you might have to answer yes if you're looking towards a data science career Now the fourth question you might have to ask yourself is do you enjoy handling complex data sets to understand patterns now 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 data science is one of these domains where uh, we consider data to be a treasure trove it's a box full of treasure like how you would have seen in those pirate movies or how you would have seen in those cartoons right the more you start digging and hunting the more gold you start picking up in our case gold is the information that we're looking for so it's very vital that you enjoy this process of digging through the dirt to get to uh, you know to get not dirt per se but digging through the soil to get to the gold right that is an important statement that uh, you know i wanted to make to you guys all right now perfect so step number 1 is this guys make sure you ask yourself these questions i've already told you the answers that you might have to say the first question the answer is going to be no or it's going to be an yes it doesn't matter you do not need to have a compulsory computer science degree to become a data scientist if you're from a mechanical background you're from a non technical background you're from a civil background you can become a data scientist with the right training make sure you stick till the end of this particular session i'm going to guide you a little bit about how you can work towards becoming uh, you know working on your specializations in the field of data science so step number 1 is to ask yourself questions guys step number 2 is a nice important step as i told you mathematics and statistics are a very very important aspect of data science now mathematics is uh, you know in a way where we talk about how a lot of uh things are involved in a computer learning uh aspects right when you talk about concepts of machine learning in machine learning your computer learns the data and it verifies if it has learned something and eventually it gives you a result to do all of that i'm not sure if you guys know this or not a lot of concepts of statistics a lot of concepts of probability probability distributions uh you know many many concepts of statistics are very 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 important there so if you see if you've seen the uh, statement that i've put down uh, in the in the in the ppt it says uh, the very keyword is highlighted and bold right there is a reason for that because yes it is that important guys step number 1 you're going to be asking yourself questions to make sure you know where you're headed step number 2 is a place where you are going to be looking at the side of mathematics statistics because these concepts are going to be foundational to what everything that you know you're going to build on top of it if your foundation is weak, it's going to cr- it's going to crumble down it's going to fall down later right but if you are very strong in these concepts of mathematics and statistics which is very popular uh, for data science well trust me it's going to help you a lot ahead now after asking yourself questions after mathematics and statistics step number 3 talks about machine learning machine learning is a beautiful sub domain in the world of data science where again as i've been mentioning uh, without human intervention your machine learns understands and it can work on its own in a very very beautiful way i am an absolute uh, you know i've been a fan of machine learning for so many years i don't even remember how long it's been now so in this particular case one thing you as 
a data science prospect should understand is that machine learning is the key thing that's uh, you know needed in today's world to solve data science. You already saw that we have a lot of data in today's world. We have a good amount of computing power, right? The world is headed towards quantum computing. Now, when that is the case, it becomes vital that you know that we have good amount of data, we have handling uh, capabilities, and we're eventually bringing these two together to drive powerful solutions, right? Now, there are many cases where if there was a task which had to be manually done, that task would definitely take somewhere around maybe 30, 35 days continuously, but a machine learning algorithm can do it in a matter of 30 seconds. Now, where is 30 days? Now, where is 30 seconds? If you were a business owner, what would you pick? 30 days of employee power or one uh, you know, less than one minute, half a minute of uh, a computer's power where it might not even take a lot of computing power as well, right? That is the power of machine learning, guys. Now, step number three is fantastic. Once you learn machine learning, what do you do? Where do you go? This is where step number four is important. Step number four talks about you guys learning programming languages. Uh, to work with the machine, to help your machine understand it, a programming language is vital as I've just mentioned. Now using a programming language, you definitely can work towards, uh, you know, finding a simple way to talk to your machine. Now, if you are this person who says, I don't like programming, I find programming very complex, I don't understand programming. Python is one such programming language which might change your thought and your approach into programming because Python is a beautiful programming language which uses syntax which is a high level syntax. It means that it is very, very similar to the English language that we use when we are talking and we are writing down things. When that is the case, it becomes so much easier to communicate with your machine that, uh, you know, it, it really will not feel a strain on you guys. Uh, if you, for example, this was a question I was just asked yesterday by one of my friends. Uh, uh, you know, she asked saying, do I have to write 300 lines of code uh, to, um, you know, to go on to create a simple machine learning algorithm or model? The answer is an absolute no. Uh, to create a very simple binary classifier in machine learning, the maximum amount of code that you can write is somewhere around 20 lines or 15 lines of code. The entire process of machine learning is only 15 or 20 lines of code, not 300, not 400, right? It is that simple, guys. So, Okay, so I uh, are, let me let me take up questions. Uh, I'm interested in machine learning concepts. What is the difference between machine learning engineer and data scientist? What is the scope, uh, you know, which has better scope in the future? Okay, it's a very good question. Now, when you're taking a look at a career in either machine learning or data science, the first thing you have to understand is that machine learning is a subdomain of data science, right? Now, a data scientist can probably do everything that a machine learning engineer can, but the reverse is not possible in many cases. Uh, to talk about the future scope about which is better now understand this there is an equal requirement for data scientists and machine learning engineers across the globe because sometimes a data scientist adds value in other things apart from machine learning while a machine learning engineer can only work towards uh, you know the advanced complex concepts that are involved in machine learning the future prospects of both the things the trends are absolutely amazing so you have nothing to worry about when you are looking towards that domain uh, Zahid says, please do a full advanced course on NoSQL. Zahid, uh, your point is noted. Uh, we are going to push this out to the concerned team and make sure that we are working on it. Right. Surat says, what is the difference between data analytics and data science? Now, data analytics talks about how you can just use data from the past and present to try to see if you can predict the future. But data science is a concept where you will talk about everything. Creation of data, storage of data, cleaning the data, using the data, eventually uh, making sure you solve the problem with the data right now. All of this is very different from what a data analyst does as well. And that's a very simple way of how I can put it out. Right guys, coming to step number five. Step number five talks about data handling. As I just mentioned in data science, data is literally the first name of data science, right? So having data, not only just storing data, but working with it is something which is very, very important. 
to store data now you can store it in multiple places the most common thing is a database now a database can be uh, you know locally it can be in your office it can be in your home it can be on a cloud storage it can be data from your competitors website it can be data from social media well i think as you can guess i can go on and on right so data is this entity that you can pick up and use from literally everywhere around you now when this becomes the case and especially for data science if we can make use of all of this data you have to know how to use it right now to do it you need to understand how you can work with databases now there's two types of databases relational databases no sql databases to work with it you're going to require a language an open source programming language or a scripting language called as a structured query language and of course there's many other languages that you can use as well now if you have the knowledge of this you can add data onto a database manipulate it delete it store it add security methodologies you can do a lot of things to make sure the step one is ready step one is where you would store the data for later usage right that is an important aspect of a data scientist role that you will definitely have complete clarity over as well so step five is a very important step which is data handling coming to step number six step number six talks about visualization now ladies and gentlemen there's a very common saying uh, you know that's that's in fact true uh, that says that the human brain can comprehend images 10,000 times faster than text. Now, uh, there is a reason that this is the case, right? You, uh, as humans, whenever we look at images, whenever we look at uh, pictures, we find it more attractive than just looking at a lot of text. That is a very important thing that you should understand, especially if you're considering a career in data science, because in this aspect, in this career, there will come a time when you will have to explain the result to a non-technical audience. Now, when you explain, when you're uh, you know explaining things to a non-technical audience if they do not know what data science is and if you're rambling about numbers algorithms all these complex concepts well they would not understand anything right now if you're explaining this to an mba he or she might not understand what you're saying so it becomes very very vital that you know how you can convert these uh, complex looking numbers into beautiful looking visualizations when i say visualizations i mean graphs i mean charts i mean dashboards it is just you taking numbers and converting it into an art form that is beautiful to look at, right? That's why I've put in the statement saying storytelling with data is an art. You have to be an artist, uh, you know, on the inside to definitely become a good data scientist, guys. Right. Now, uh, when we are taking a look at step number seven, step number seven is very, very important because here is somewhere, uh, this is a step where you'll be using the previous step. Step number six uh, spoke about visualizations. Step number seven talks about how you can use visualizations to put it to effect, right? Now with multiple visualizations, you can create a beautiful looking dashboard. You can create a report. This report is what you are going to use to convey things to a non-technical audience or convey it to board members also, right? So if you cannot do this and if you show your board members maybe an Excel sheet which has like what, 10 lakh entries? Well, they might not understand what you're saying, right? Now, even if you show a very uh, complex looking uh, data set to a data scientist, he or she might not understand upfront, but you convert it into a beautiful looking graph. Say that this is the X axis, this is the Y axis, this is what we are trying to do guess what it is going to it, there is a good chance that that person 90 percent chance that the person might understand what you're saying even though you don't have to explain it right that is the power of visualization that is the power of reporting guys now guys again make sure uh, you talk about uh, you know again uh, talk about how you have used visualizations in the past have you used beautiful looking graphs whenever you are in your uh, school time college time whatever it is head to the comment section and let me know i am watching all of your comments in the chat section guys so make sure you uh, head to head there and let me know all right perfect now let me let me quickly take a look at all your comments and we can uh, resume right give me one second guys Okay, beautiful. Uh, Subhashish has a very good question. What is the starting salary for a data scientist? Subhashish, we're gonna discuss this. Make sure you stick around. Uh, uh, where can I found data scientist jobs? Well, I would highly suggest you look towards all these uh, very familiar and the big data, uh, you know, big job hunt sites. For example, LinkedIn is amazing. You can check out Indeed, Monster.com. 
uh you have multiple different places but the most important thing that's going to help you subhashish is definitely a networking so make sure you are talking to data scientists make sure your friends family members or just reach out to data scientists to get recommendations and then you know you can definitely work on uh, getting a job in data science as well right guys now coming to step number 8 step number 8 talks about how you definitely require practical knowledge working on industry level projects and use cases will give you a feel of how it's going to be when you become a real data scientist right now a good certification program will definitely give you access to multiple practical projects it will definitely give you access to how you can use your practical learning right now theory theory is very very important for data science important thing it's not only theory it's how you can use this theory to use eventually practical usage is everything right now when you look out for a job when you are uh, you know in an interview or something there's a very good chance the question they might ask is what have you done with your learning now why is a hiring manager curious about what you have done right it shows that you are not only strong in the theoretical concepts of things but you can practically convey it use it to eventually solve a problem guys step number 8 is a very very important step make sure you are putting in a good amount of time to work on projects step number 8 is probably the most important step that we have on this guide so make a note of all of this guys right with this we can come to step number 9 step number 9 is something which you should spend a good amount of time with is to understand what's going on around you in the world of data science right this is a very very big domain as i told you you cannot learn everything there is to learn in a matter of years as well so what should you do to uh, you know make sure that you get a good job in data science or that you know everything that there is to know about this domain the most important thing that i would highly suggest is take a look at the current trends now if you just do a simple google search after the session uh, putting saying google uh, in google saying data science trends for 2021 you will find a list of so many things which will take off in the field of data science in this particular year right now if you put your time and effort into working towards that there's a good chance at the end of it that the light at the end of the tunnel here is going to be beautiful for you because that is what people are looking for and you are a person who can do it so to stay at the top of your domain to make sure you are ahead of the competition always look at trends work on trends and make sure that you are aligned in a way that you're going parallelly with these trends as well ladies and gentlemen now coming to step number 10 step number 10 talks about one very important thing if you are a fresher especially is to build build a domain specific resume now a lot of cases a lot of profiles that i have screened is usually one resume for multiple jobs that is a wrong thing to do make sure that you have a resume which is specific to that domain specific to that job every job description every requirement is different from the other right so to make sure that you are catering to this uh, thing you have to customize your resume and work on it so this is the most important part the resume is the most important document in your career that's going to help you find a job so make sure at step number 10 that you are working on your resume uh, in in an important fashion right guys now coming to step number 11 step number 11 is an important step because here we'll be looking at specializations right now there's multiple different uh, ways of how you can become a data scientist you can a uh, learn on your own but it's going to be very tough you can uh, probably pick up a masters program to become a data scientist where you can have further education but 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 in today's world the most popular way of learning is online education right here at great learning we have multiple specialization programs it's going to take you right from a beginner all the way to becoming a complete expert in this concept of data science of course among other domains as well uh, at the end of the session i'm going to quickly guide you about all these programs so make sure you stick till the end but step number 11 is consider working on a specialization because see there is no better investment that you can do uh, you know that's going to give you better returns than knowledge right knowledge is the best result, return on investment that you can provide so make sure that you're looking towards these offerings where uh, you will be hand holded till the end right from beginner to you becoming an expert it's a very important step by step uh, process that i highly suggest uh, you guys look towards as well guys now coming to a very important aspect of what a career in data science looks like 
you are in for a treat because let me tell you that data science is among the top 10 jobs or top 10 careers to have right now. There was a time when people said data science is going to be the top uh, career. Now it's been the top career for the last 10 or 15 years. Guess what? Now people are saying that it is one of the most trending computer science careers of all time. Before they used to say this is the most trending IT career. Now that is gone. People are saying if you are talking about computer science, data science is the biggest thing that is right. So that's an amazing thing to know that you are interested in this kind of a domain, which is showing so much power uh, in today's world, right? So guys, a career in data science is beautiful. It is highly rewarding and it is on, uh, almost a bulletproof or a recession proof career as well. Now, uh, let me just quickly get a gulp of water guys. In the meantime, again, you guys, uh, you know, as I've told you guys, this is going to be a highly interactive session. I want you guys to head, uh, you know, to the comment session and, uh, you know, just, just let me know your thoughts about uh, data science as well. Okay, Gunjan has a beautiful question saying, what are the sufficient skills for data scientists? Well, Gunjan, there is multiple things that you should know. Firstly, you have to look and work towards mathematics. The second thing is you have to look towards and work, uh, you know, towards learning a programming language. The third thing is you need to understand how you can use mathematics and programming languages to solve a problem and then you practically work on projects. For example, if you head to Great Learning Academy, we have a foundations course on data science, which you definitely can look at because there we cover all the skills in depth that you need to become a data scientist. So make sure after this video, you look at Great Learning Academy. I'm sure, uh, you know, the team who's working the comments right now will give you uh, uh, the link of our data science foundation course as well. Right guys, now uh, let me quickly take you back to March 2020. That is when uh, the uh, people thought that the recession is coming, the IT world is going to crash and all of that, right? So many people lost jobs across the world. But across multiple surveys, the most recession proof domain that has shown very strong insight is a data science role. Now, uh, even during the time when a lot of people were being laid off, data scientists were the number one requirement then. That shows that no matter what the current situation is in the world, a data scientist is required right now. When more and more data scientists are required, why would you fire the ones that you have? It doesn't make sense. So the demand for expert data scientists is just increasing on and on and on. Now more than ever, data science is a very important player in the world of healthcare. I am not sure if you guys know this or not. Even before World Health Organization uh, found out that there is a COVID-19 pandemic that's going to happen, there was a company which used artificial intelligence to showcase that in Wuhan, China, that there is an unusual spike in the cases of pneumonia and then they predicted it. There is a company which did it. They were the first ones in the world. They used artificial intelligence. They used data science to do it right now. That's a very important thing that you should know. And the concepts of machine learning and the concepts of artificial intelligence are very, very strong on the trend chart. People are hiring now more than ever for data scientists, for machine learning experts, for, uh, you know, data analysts, all of these things come under the same domain of data science, right? Uh, the other thing you should understand is now that everyone are working from home, it is very nice. It is uh, an amazing thing that even the big companies are saying, hey, even in 2021, we're going to work from home because this is a career where which will which is not going to say you have to come to office to work. So there's many, many different ways that you can use data science itself to track what the employees are doing. So it is one of these careers, which is showing immense amount of growth, immense amount of stability, which is the most important thing in today's world. Now, if you guys are freshers or if you're a person who's just less than four years of experience in this world, let me tell you a nice fact. 70% of all the job postings for data scientists, right? Every seven out of 10 job posting finds requires someone who, who has around or less than four years of experience. So they're a beginner, they have one year, two year, three or four years of experience. Now, this is a huge advantage to you, which is not the case in many other domains, right? Every time 10 job postings are put out, seven is going to ask for you if you're a fresher or a person with less experience, right? That is a huge, huge advantage in this domain, guys. Right. 
Now, uh, taking a look at the designations that you might uh, work towards if you're looking towards a career in data science, you can be called as a data scientist, you can be called as a data analyst, you can work towards becoming a data engineer or even a BI analyst as well. Now, a BI analyst stands for Business Intelligent and Intelligence Analyst. It's a very important part of this. So it's not only that if you look towards a data science domain that you have to become a data scientist, all of these other things, data analysis, business analysis, data engineering, BI analyst, all of this is eventually in the same domain. Data science is like a huge umbrella and under this umbrella, there are multiple concepts where you can find multiple jobs in multiple domains. Each of these domains have subdomains where you can find jobs as well. That is how powerful this domain of data science is. And here are some of the uh, salaries that you guys have been asking for. Now I had multiple comments uh, that said, okay, so what are the salaries? salaries for a data scientist, the salaries are beautiful. They are very, very highly paying even for a beginner right now. As a beginner, you would start your career in data science as an associate data scientist. Uh, you know, you'll be paid somewhere around six lakhs per annum in India and around $66,000 in the US. After a couple of years of experience, two, three years of experience, you can be called as a senior data scientist. You can earn somewhere around 12 lakhs per annum in India and $90,000 in the USA per year. And after that, again, another three or four years of experience, you can become a lead data scientist. You can have a salary which is around 22 lakhs per annum and $116,000 per annum in India and USA respectively. And after that, once you're working your way towards the top step of the ladder, if you become a product manager in the case of data science, you can earn a handsome salary somewhere around 35 lakhs per annum in India and around $180,000 in the USA. Now, these are average numbers numbers which are considered both looking at the lower numbers and the higher numbers. So there is a good chance that a project a product manager can earn thrice or twice the number that you see on your screen right now. Yes, it is possible. If you have the right skills, people are ready to pay you the amount that you're asking for no matter where you are in today's world. Even though it sounds like it is not true. Well, quickly, uh, you know, after this video, head to LinkedIn, check out all the trends that, ha that are happening for data science uh, domains. People across the world are not just looking in their state, in their country. They're looking everywhere to bring in the best data scientists possible right this is a fact uh, ladies and gentlemen now once you take a look at all these salaries I'm sure you guys are curious about how further you know how you can learn data science further the first advice that I have for all of you guys is make sure that you are not overwhelmed by the content now you guys tell me when you go to Google and just type learn data science you are bombarded with thousands and thousands of articles videos uh, you know, blogs, courses, there are so many things that you will not know what to learn. You will not know how to learn, where to learn, what is the route that you have to take uh, to become successful here right now. If you have so many different things on your plate, you can get confused. You can, uh, you, know, you can drop data science because you don't know how to do it. Do not do this. If you take a structured way of learning, right, you can eventually work towards becoming an expert in this uh, domain, guys. The key, the most important aspect here is to keep your learning in a structured way. Take it slow. Make sure your foundations are strong. Keep it structured. You definitely can become a data scientist no matter what domain you have come from, guys. The next thing that's going to help you immensely is if you talk with the experts who are in the industry as well, right? Now, for example, you are in this session with me. I have been a data science guy for God knows how many years, right? So I am a subject matter expert in data science and I absolutely can uh, help you to, you know, work on your way to becoming a data scientist. So make sure you talk to experts, make sure you're talking to whoever it is, family members, friends, uh, colleagues. If, if you are interested in that domain, you have to reach out, you have to build a network and work on that guys. And of course, if you're looking for more free content on data science, we here at Great Learning have uh, a lot of places where you can learn for free. For example, Great Learning Academy. If you guys haven't checked out Great Learning Academy, I highly suggest you check it out because this is a place where we are providing courses for free. You can learn for free, enroll for free. At the end of it, you can have a course completion certificate, right? A certificate of completion 
for free as well guys so make sure you check out great learning academy we have multiple domains multiple courses taught in multiple languages by again subject matter experts the next place where you can find a lot of free content from great learning is the great learning youtube channel guys if you haven't subscribed to the great learning youtube channel right now make sure you hit the subscribe button make sure you hit the bell icon because if you hit the bell icon you will be notified as soon as we put out courses uh, so uh, we, have, we are getting questions saying okay uh, you know hindi of course we do have courses which are taught in hindi on great learning academy as well and of course on our youtube channel too make sure to check them out and for the other crowd who absolutely love reading now i love reading uh, now if you love reading as well you can check out great learning blogs as well just quickly google search great learning blogs and you can find out that we have blogs which are written by experts across the globe you can read you can learn uh, you know again for free right so you can do a lot of these things and get started in this particular domain guys so after getting started as i've mentioned if you are looking towards becoming a complete expert in this domain i highly highly suggest you check out the specialization and post graduation offerings we have here at great learning now all these free content it will definitely get you started and help you become uh, you know an intermediate level of learning it's going to give you a good amount of knowledge no doubt but if you have to become an expert where you completely go from a beginner to a thorough expert who is ready to take on the industry well you definitely should consider some time and effort to look towards the post graduation offerings we have here at great learning we have multiple pg programs you have multiple certification training programs in collaboration with amazing universities across the globe right we are in collaboration with texas mccombs great lakes stanford northwestern university some of the amazing universities and ivy league schools in the world so make sure you head to great learning website greatlearning.in to check out certain offerings we have which will definitely help you so you know there are there are multiple advantages you can get here guys you can it is literally hand holding you through you becoming a beginner you are being a beginner all the way to becoming an expert one is to one mentor sessions uh, you know you can have have hybrid learning you can have classroom learning online learning live recordings uh, you know live sessions recordings whatever it is you can customize it in a way where uh, you know you will have a good amount of knowledge uh, and you can become an expert in this domain as well so i just named two or three advantages here there are numerous advantages that i can tell you about uh, you know the offerings we have here at great learning in terms of specializations and post graduation make sure you head to greatlearning.in to check them out we have multiple domains again and i highly suggest uh, you know if you put in a good amount of time you definitely will be interested because at the end of it the light at the end of the tunnel especially in the field of data science as i showed you the salaries are amazing the job trends are beautiful and now you already know the step by step way of how you can become a data scientist right so everything has come together now is the time make sure you uh, you know use this guide to go on with your learning guys so uh, now that you've reached the end of the session guys this is it uh, you have been a beautiful audience as always it's an absolute pleasure to be teaching all of you all you are a fantastic audience uh, you you know you keep it highly interactive i absolutely love you all uh, guys again make sure you check out great learning academy and of course subscribe to the great learning youtube channel hit that bell icon so that you never miss any updates from us and and as always even after the session ends if you have any questions put them down in the comment section we will uh, be more than happy to help you out right guys on that note make sure you're staying safe from the pandemic take all the measures required keep your learning rate up online education is now the biggest thing so make sure you're using it completely stay on top of trends and keep learning guys all right i'll see you on the next one have a beautiful day ahead guys cheers